welcome to Busted Speakers. I'm your one-time host, Ed. As you know, Alex usually hosts these things, but this time he's taken a bit of a backseat to the proceedings, so... Hello, Alex. Hello, yes, I just feel like Ed knows more about Death Grips and this release than me to properly inform you guys of it. But yeah, go on, Ed. Doing a good job. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. So... This time we're covering, as Alex just mentioned, the band Death Grips. This is a prolific and well-known group at this point in their career. They've been going since 2010. They've put out quite a number yeah. of releases at this point, whether it be their many studio albums or little side projects, or even the Zach Hill and Andy Morin side project, the ILYs, who also recently released a, mm -hmm. a new project. This new release is being dubbed a mega mix. Um, it's essentially yeah. one track, but it's 22 minutes long, and it's split into, I'd say, about seven different segments, but we're going to be discussing the whole thing in broad terms today, just to avoid confusion, because I've been using a track list for this thing, but obviously it's a fan-made track list, so... Just to avoid confusion, we're just going to talk about this as a holistic piece, even though there yeah. are some quite clear points where it changes things up. Death Grips are an experimental hip-hop band, but like at this point, <laughs> who knows what to label them as. Speaking of genre tags, the title of this thing, Steroids, and then parentheses, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Gabba, is quite an interesting title given its incorporation of the genre of Gabba, which I don't know if you're that familiar with, Alex, but it was a very strange movement in the 90s in European dance music of songs with extremely high BPMs, and I think this release kind of matches that. Yeah, I'm list. only aware of it vaguely because of uh, this album, or this, not album, EP. But yeah, yeah. I think I originated in Norway, not too sure. Didn't look too much into it. Something like that. I've heard a few Gabba tracks in my time. They're very funny. <laughs> um, I think this release, though, is is very much the opposite of that. It's a very dark and erratic, quite insane little EP or mix or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I think... And you mentioned this to me before we started recording. I think there's an album's worth of content in these 20 minutes. Yeah, it feels like an album's worth of experiences in here. It does feel like that. Like I said, there are distinct points where it changes things up and it's like, okay, this is where this track ends and this next track begins. But then there's other moments where it will break neck transition into a completely different passage, but then return to the same chorus that was sung before. Yeah. and make you think, oh wait, I thought this song changed. It's a pretty crazy release. The fact that they've released it as this singular 22 minute long track only makes things even more exhilarating because you never really know where it's going to go next. Yeah, yeah. It, it does feel like a long soundscape of song fragments here that I'm not sure if they like... Do you think they had these like f parts... Uh, intended to be their own separate songs and they decided to mix them together because the mega mix part makes it sound as if this is like a rough draft of songs are maybe intended for more fuller release. I'm not sure if you think that. I, th I, I think we're not too far off the mark in assuming that, but I think it's just partially the band's sense of humour yeah. coming through to an extent. And over the past few years, Death Grips have continually done the same thing, which is quite unusual for them, which is release a side project before a, a proper studio album. So in 2015, prior to the release of their album Jenny Death, we had the Fashion Week soundtrack, which was a fully instrumental soundtrack that was pretty good for yeah, what it yeah, was it's worth. Pretty some banning tunes on there, really. For sure, and then in 2016 we had the infamous Interview 2016 <laughs> video, which was uh, then made into an EP, and just to quickly sum that up, it was a an interview with uh, Death Grips performed by, well, uh, conducted by Matthew Hoffman. Look him up if you want to see something quite interesting in terms of, like, this is the guy that Death Grips chose to work with, really? 
But the interview had no audio. It was all instrumental music, and this was prior to the release of their album Bottomless Pit, which came out last year. Yeah. I love Death Grips. I think they're like one of the most prolific game changing bands in modern music. Like forget about genres. They they just completely push boundaries in, in whatever way they can. And the fact that they can so consistently put out release after release and have them be this great so consistently is seriously impressive to me because I think this new mix, Steroids, absolutely blows those two aforementioned pre-album releases out of the water. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree with that. And uh, yeah, just whole release made me feel a lot of things. Um, it really is Death Grips heaven. And despite being so hardcore and energetic the whole way through and creatively and attention demanding i find myself zoning out and listening to like the whole synth explosions because that's like the biggest reason i like to listen to this is the synth sounds a little bit like andy moran is a i feel like his contributions to the band aren't as prominently known as the other two but honestly i feel like he creates a big part of what i love about death grips i really love his contributions here in addition to how crazy good zach hill is for the whole duration because some some of this feels like really fast beats i cannot believe it's zach hill drumming the roles of the band members are quite unclear i mean from what i understand all of them handle production right so it's hard to say like whether the synths were down to andy morin's contributions or not but i do love the synths on here death grips have similarly to groups like sonic youth really found their own little miniature outlets in terms of here's how our instruments sound and there's a lot of consistent um, similar sounding synths throughout Death Grip's discography I think there's a lot of synths on here that sound like the ones on Bottomless Pit but here they're just ramped up to 11 and Bottomless Pit was a very clean release by Death Grip's standards in my opinion this release Steroids is absolutely rip roaring lo-fi madness so it's a big change of pace from their previous record and i think with this ep they do two things really well i think first off in releasing what they essentially treat as a small side project to tide over fans until the next full record and have it be this great and exciting and well received across the board they prove once again what an absurdly formidable force death grips is in in modern music And the second thing they do really well is maintain excitement that may not have necessarily been there for that upcoming LP, which was confirmed in tandem with this EP's release, or mix, or whatever you want to call it. That's going to get confusing across this review. Mega Um, mix. Mega mix. I mean, like I said, it it blows Fashion Week and Interview out of the water for me. Um, Absolutely. I'm sure you agree, Alex. But with those releases being pretty good and then the following albums, in my opinion, being absolutely phenomenal. If this is the pre-album release this time around, oh man, I can't even imagine what is just well, around the riverbend for Death Grips. Personally, I think uh, it's not, like, I don't think it's going to be a comparable shift in a, uh, like, quality jump. Like, I think it'll be roughly the same quality level as this like i don't imagine it being leaps and bounds better than this i think this is their peak level just in a really rough raw format in a way like i i don't know it, it feels like less of a side project or maybe the fact they can't produce like a lesser quality sound project side project now this is like just how good they are now like in making side projects supposedly to tide fans over maybe that's how it is I mean, Death Grips, when they quote-unquote broke up, they specifically said they're operating at maximum capacity, so maybe this is really, really is them, like, at their very best in a certain sense, but I think with the next record they could come through with something that's a lot more focused than this EP is. Because if I have one complaint about steroids, it's that lyrically there's a lot of interesting stuff going on, um, but it doesn't really grab you in such a way as to like, here, you should figure out these lyrics. It's more exciting in how the instrumentals sound and 
the utterly insane flows from Ride on this thing. I mean, the way it starts out with the My Whole Life segment is yeah. totally exhilarating. Um, I love this segment, but it also proves how nuanced the group is, because midway through this first song, it transitions from the breakneck speedy mania of the first section, which has these utterly, you know, crushing drums just repeatedly hitting over and over, and Ryan yeah, just yeah. utterly erratic, you know, with the rabid barks of the chorus of this track. And it quickly goes into this really slow, hazy display of Stefan's range and Death Grip's range because I mean I see a lot of people say Death Grips are just loudness for the sake of it. This proves if anything that they can do quiet moments really well on top of that, you know? Definitely. I mean that's calmer spoken word part or spoken part uh really for some reason like it really connected to me. Just because it was so starkly different from the whole my whole life, my whole fucking life being like the main <laughs> the, 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 the main anchor hooking us in, if you want a tangible hook in the first section. And he does sound, For sure. he sounds really really annoyed, like he has been annoyed all his life. You can hear the bite and annoyance in his voice. Uh, it's awesome, because you go right in the deep end into the chorus. Into the chaos. Past Death Grips releases have had these really iconic opening tracks that just pull you right in immediately and whack you over the head with their madness. And yeah, they do the very same thing on this mix. Um, my whole life, if if they ever perform this track live, people are going to go insane. Absolutely, you know? that's what I was thinking, and I think it will be like a fan favorite for some reason because it's like I don't think it'll be lesser known, but I feel like uh, just because it's like sidelined as an EP, I think like. Sadly, in the future, like it'll become slightly less canonized than their yeah, main albums. So, so I feel yes, and especially since it's part of one song, like obviously it's the most well-known part of this song already, pretty much. But um, I feel like if this becomes a live staple, it'll be like a really big, like obscure fan favorite. Like especially if they continue for <laughs> years and years on end, this will become like the big, um, big like crowd. Let's go fucking nuts on. <laughs> the thing is, I'm not entirely sure if Death Grips are going to be performing any of these tracks live because true, yeah. there's so many crazy vocal effects going on here. I mean, the second portion of the mix, uh, which I call en enigmatic, yeah. call it whatever you want. There's not really a distinct hook on this this part of the mix. No, no. But there's these verses that are. They've done more to them than just speed them up, but Ride is rapping, like, inhumanly fast. I'm sure you know the bit I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. And there are these buzzing synths in the background that just pierce through his voice, and he's just sort of struggling to stay above it, but just about keeping his ground, you know. And then these insane trap drums just come in. I wish this segment lasted longer, because it's freaking amazing this when i listened to this mix for the first time that was the moment where just you know my mouth went wide open i like couldn't believe that this was a side <laughs> project essentially you know like this is album quality material on here yeah, this, this isn't is just a lazy thing yeah this is definitely a game material and th those are the synth explosions i'm talking about that really for really sure, yeah. impressed me I mean, th that whole shift from the My Whole Life bit, because that doesn't have a strong hook for some reason, halfway during that endurance, or what do you call it, sorry? This section? Enigmatic. Enigmatic, well, it does feel like It's endurance. been given other names, but that's what I call it. I don't know why I keep calling it that, maybe that's my name for it, with no basis, but uh, yeah. For some reason, for half uh, the whole way through that, I kept expecting the My Whole Life thing to be a recurring theme, but yeah. It isn't, I guess. One thing I want to mention is, in the past I've seen Death Grips compared to a group called Atari Teenage Riot. Uh-huh. And there's a track on here which I call Bald-Headed Girl. Mm -hmm. That seems to be the popular name because it has quite a distinct hook of Ride repeating the phrase Bald-Head Girl. 
Yeah. That track sounds very Atari Teenage Riot inspired, like more so than usual. Um, my brother actually made a, a really cool comparison that never would have occurred to me. It sounds like the sort of trancey thing that you'd hear on one of the Wipeout PlayStation game soundtracks. I don't know if you're familiar with those, well, Alex. Are, the, but... are those like um, surf, like sea games? No, no, they're a, a sort of futuristic racing game that was really oh, okay, popular okay. In, in, in clubs in the 90s, funnily enough, mainly because it had this aesthetic and soundtrack that really appealed to club goers in the late 90s, I guess. <laughs> but the, the trancey vibe of the instrumental on this bald-headed girl track is just exhilarating. I, I mean, I keep using the same words to describe this release, but... Death it's Grips true. music sometimes is almost beyond description, I'd say. I'd say so. And I was actually thinking that that um, before we we're going to review this, um, if there's like this feels like the sort of thing that like needs a review more than others because there's that much to uncover. Like you, it feels like you need like people analysing it to like understand it more, like more than pretty much most other things because this is so dense and full of depth. And just going back to the wipeout thing you were saying, it's pretty sad that I went to sea and surf in my thoughts for that because it definitely, <laughs> it definitely uncovers a pretty sad love for like post peak Beach Boys when that's like the really bad collaboration with uh, the Fat Boys on Wipeout. <laughs> Not a oh, good God. song, but yeah. No. Anyway, back to, to this. Back to experimental hip hop worlds apart from. Uh from the Beach Boys uh, dark era. Dark era indeed. There's a lot to say about this and a lot that I feel like I'm not even ready to go into, particularly pertaining to the lyrics and the lyrical themes on here. Oh man. It's it's not quite as readable as I'd like it to be. Some of Stefan thanks to the lo fi production, some of Stefan's vocals are really sort of buried in the mix a bit too much in my opinion. I think particularly on the bald-headed girl track and enigmatic it's sort of hard to make out what he's saying without a guide and sadly death grips unusually didn't release the lyrics along with this so if you head on to genius it's all total guesswork but um i've listened to this at least 10 times and the last listen i had i thought i'm gonna bring up genius and see what stefan is saying that i'm probably missing out when i listen to this and it revealed a whole other layer to the record that me being a Death Grips fan yeah. for as long as I have been, it sh I shouldn't have been surprised because Ride's vo lyrics are often puzzles that need to be solved in a way. Um, that being said, there are some lyrics that really did jump out to me from the get-go, primarily on the black body portion of the mix. Mm -hmm. The verses here are really striking. I love the, you know, lyrics about seeing your own doppelganger and Ride's sort of nonchalant approach to his own fame and it almost continues the lyrical themes yeah. from the track Air off Bottomless Pit, like the sort of, oh, yeah, I, can yeah. I can just shrug this off, like I don't care, like that's what's in Stefan's mind. But at the same time, there's a ton of braggadocio on this release as well, of him saying, like, you know, we know how good we are. We know how unique we are in modern music. It's very gutsy to say, to praise yourself on your own music. Some people would say that's a big no-no, but Death Grips get away with it, honestly. Um, on the lyrical side of things, it wasn't... For some reason, it didn't. Not a lot of it didn't jump out at me because I've probably listened to it a lot less than you. And like you were saying, the lyrics are a bit buried. But a bit buried, one yeah. line that really did, yeah, one line that really did speak to me, and I think it's in the en enigmatic section, is the line. And I know it's part of another whole big section. The line like, "At night shift, I don't exist." It really connected to me of like, because it feels like places of fins for his whole life. Is that in the Mile Whole Life section or the Enigmatic? I'm not sure, but just as a little lyric, that part really stood out to me for some reason. Yeah, I think that's at the end of My Whole Life, but I could be wrong. The transition between My Whole Life and Enigmatic is quite hard to pinpoint, honestly. Yeah. But 
yeah, definitely the end of my whole life where it goes a lot slower. All the lyrics there are really creative and interesting and really with uh, the first lyrics on this piece to really stick out to me. But again, I wish Stefan wasn't quite as buried as he is on a lot of these um, tracks in the mix, but it's not that much of a complaint because the music That's true. on its own merit is grabbing me way more than it needs to instrumentally you know the the production here is utterly insane you've you're getting so many cool vocal effects so many cool synth sounds just erratic drumming from zach hill it, it's just it again it's kind of beyond description it's such an insane release for 20 minutes yeah and it doesn't let up at all there's so much content here and it doesn't let up at all there's one small portion that I think is a bit weaker than all the others, which is the portion that has the female vocal sample that just shouts hi, and then it <laughs> goes into this very weird, twitchy, strange song structure. And there's a hook on this, and it doesn't. It's one of the weaker Death Grips hooks in my opinion. But every single other portion of the mix is really, really strong. Like, if we did have these tracks separated, this would be one of the most consistent releases of 2017 so far. I love my whole life. I love Enigmatic. I love Bald Headed Girl. The portion after Bald Headed Girl with the, you know, come and go whenever refrain. Oh, yeah, yeah. Awesome, too. And something interesting about that part is it has Zach Hill vocals opening and closing it, which... We've never had Zach Hill sing on a Death Grips release before, and that makes me think, is Zach going to be singing on the next full album? Well, I mean, maybe. That's really, really hard to imagine, but that would be really cool. For some reason, I imagined him on Inanimate Sensation. For some reason, I imagined he was helping on the, like, open of it, but clearly not. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I think my favourite track on the whole mix is the final track, which I've just called Gabba. Yeah, I can agree with that. This is definitely the most Gabba influenced track on the mix and really brings home Death Grip's idea of, of this genre implementing it into their own unique sound. So many awesome hooks on this closing track. There's yeah. three different hooks and they all stick out and there's so many different different passages in this same part. It's just oh my god, like I I'm Utterly baffled as to how Death Grips so consistently put out great albums, great side projects, and change up their sound really frequently as well. You know, they're not just stagnating on the same thing that they know they're good at. They're trying new things. And knowing them, the next album is going to sound nothing like Steroids, but that's because we have Steroids. We have this release. And even though it's only 22 minutes with a about six or seven tracks, depending on how you look at it. Yeah, I feel really satisfied. Like I could wait until next year for Death Grips to release their next album. I hope they come out with one this year, but this has really scratched that itch for me, and then some. Well, it brings back home back the point that this does have an album's worth of content in 22 minutes. The fact that it would be enough uh, of a Death Grips fix for you if this is the sole release from them this year, that says a lot for how content-filled and ac action-packed. I think that's actually a good word for this as well. Like, you don't usually yeah, use action-packed for music. It's for, like, action films, I guess. But it's really suitable here, because it truly is. Yeah, so uh, should we get down to what we'd rate it, I guess? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Do you want to go ahead and share your concluding thoughts first, Alex? Yeah, well, I'm really satisfied with this. I'm not sure how much of this is improvised, but some sound parts sound really loose, some sound really deliberate. But f one thing I'm really sure of, it's all Death Grips goodness, and this has basically already become my go-to, like, Death Grips fix thing, just because it goes through so many fins so quickly. Honestly, this is... It's odd that this feels like the definitive Death Grips release, almost. I know singular songs are probably better than this, but I, I might be a bit hyperbolic here, but um, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Like, the reason I haven't... I, well, I, I don't know. I, I Maybe if the vocals were brought up more, I'd give it a 10. Like, honestly, 
I don't find any faults with this. Like, wow, my enjoyment of Death Grips is like distilled into all the great parts on this. Yeah, maybe nine's a bit too high. I might retract that. But honestly, like, this really does fill the enjoyment void of Death Grips really well for me. I'd have to say. That's awesome, man. I'm so happy you enjoy this. To that extent. Yeah, yeah. It's absolutely scratched those itches for me as well. I am so satisfied with this release. I could wait another 12 months for the next Death Grips album because this is just brilliant. This is just such a good release, even though it's relatively short. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of people describe it as like, oh, it's just insane all the way through. And in some way, yes, it is. But there's a lot of quiet and slower, nuanced moments, like on Black Body, which has these epic organ leads and this flute sound a, a, across oh, yeah, the verses yeah. it's not what I would describe hardcore, it's more subtle than that if not for the for the one section that I'm kind of iffy on which only lasts about 2 minutes That's of true, the whole yeah, 22 yeah. minute track, track length I'd probably give this a 9 out of 10 as well but for now, I'm just going to give it a strong, strong 8 out of 10. This is one of the best releases of the year. I love, this is yeah. one of the best releases in Death Grips discography. And it's amazing to say that, and it's amazing to know that this is not even the biggest thing they're going to be dropping in the you know near future. I mean, I'm not entirely sure if Death Grips are going to release their upcoming album this year. They never said anything about that. We could easily just get maybe a single this year, later this year, mm -hmm. and then the album next year. But honestly, like I said, I don't need any more Death Grips goodness for a while after the release of this. And it's so awesome to know that I'm never really going to get tired of Death Grips at this point, because whenever you could get tired of a release, you could always go back to one of their other releases, which sounds so different, and be satisfied in a different way all over again like yeah this band is so important and so just they are leaving their mark in music history at the moment i think in 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 decades time i mean perhaps this is a bit hyperbolic to say but i think in decades time death grips are going to be looked back upon in the same way groups like king crimson were looked back upon yeah that'd be really good if that happened yeah definitely <laughs> um it's odd because this has honestly became like my go-to fin if I want a Death Grips fix. Maybe because it's like condensed, but like before that it was like either Bottomless Pit or Government Plates, I guess. But yeah, really good. Solid stuff. Thanks for joining me and leading this review, Ed. Oh, no problem, dude. And uh, I'll try my best not to screw up the outro. <laughs> so, thanks for listening to Bust Speakers. This has been ed and alex and just let us know what you thought of this death grips mega mix um did you love it did you hate it why i'm stealing fantano's outro oh, man. <laughs> um and check us out on social media check out singles club oh, yeah, which is yeah. another podcasty show that alex and i run together where we discuss new singles in a very loose format perhaps even more loose than Busted Speakers yeah, I'd say so. if that's even possible. Is that everything? Yeah. Did I miss no, anything? No, no, just uh, thanks for listening and see you guys later Yeah, thanks for listening guys. See you later <laughs>